<laughs> I think that all the uh, county employees at least get fruit today and on a rainy day like this, anything's got to help. So uh, we'll go ahead and start the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Just a reminder to silence your cell phones and meeting documents are available for review down next to Commissioner Heiberger. Um, and Craig is here if you need a listening device. Uh, so first item is to consider a motion to amend the agenda. Madam Chair, uh, I'd like to suggest amending 4A to change the word July to August. That's my motion. Motion in a second, uh, just to correct that the Minnehaha County Juvenile Detention Center report is for August and not July. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Now I'd consider a motion to approve the agenda as amended. So moved. Second. Motion and um, motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Next item is to approve the commission meeting minutes for September 24th, 2019. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Um, next item are bills to be paid in the amount of $749,435.91. Madam Chair, pay the bills. Second. Motion and a second. Any comments? Madam Chair, uh, the uh, capital projects, uh, there's 2.4 million uh, that's going on our jail project. Yes, and we'll be talking about that a little bit later. So, okay, so we had a motion and a second. Any further comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Uh, next item, I just note for your uh, review, the Minnehaha County Juvenile Detention Center report for August of 2019. Takes us to item five. I'd consider a motion to approve our routine personnel actions. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm Jen with Human Resources, and um, this morning we wanted to recognize the significant employee anniversaries for October 2019. Um, this year, or this month rather, with five years of service, we have Link Mitchell, who is a deputy sheriff with the sheriff's office. Brandon Greiner, who's a corporal at the jail. Dan Eady, who is a building facilities maintenance technician with our facilities department, all with five years of service. And then with 15 years, we have Rebecca Carpenter. She's a legal office assistant in our state's attorney's office. And Bill Hoskins, who is, of course, our museum director. He's been with the museum now for 35 years. So we just want to take an opportunity to thank these people for all their service. And I know we have at least one employee here, uh, Brandon Greiner. I don't know if you're interested in saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next time. Well, congratulations and thank you for all your service and, and the other folks that couldn't be with us today. Yeah. We also wanted to take this opportunity to record the volunteers in the county departments for September 2019. We had over 280 volunteers again last month, so a great volunteer month. Um, these people donated their time and their services in a number of different departments, the Siouxland Heritage Museum, the Public Defender's Office, the Sheriff's Office, and the Jail, the Juvenile Detention Center, Emergency Management, and at Safe Home. And we thank all of those folks as well. That's an incredible amount of service that helps the county. So thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, that takes us to item six, abatements. There are none. Item seven, notices and requests. There are none. Item eight, planning and zoning notices, and there are none today. Um, Item nine, petition for compromise of lien. There are none. So that takes us to opportunity for public comment. Is there anyone here today who'd like to speak about something that's not on our agenda? All right, not seeing none. Um, that'll take us to regular business. First item is to consider a resolution to declare a flooding disaster for September 20, 2019 throughout Minnehaha County. Jason Gearman, it's appropriate you should be here on another rainy day. <laughs> Yeah, I got to get going. <laughs> <coughs> Jason Gehrman with uh, Minneapolis County Emergency Management. Uh, good morning. Um, the reason I'm here today, obviously, is to call uh, to uh, ask for a resolution to declare disaster from the last round on September 11th with the tornadoes in Sioux Falls and then the severe flooding uh, to the north um, throughout uh, Del Rapids, uh, Renner, and Brandon. Uh, so that's 
why I'm here today. Um, I don't have real damage hard numbers for damage estimates, but with the city of Sioux Falls and the amount of damage in Brandon, I think we'll qualify again for a disaster to meet that monetary threshold that we did in the spring. So this is just to start that process, and I know Lincoln County did theirs last week. Are there any I, questions? I've got Regan Smith here too, if there's questions about the city damage or uh, maybe he can give you some harder numbers than I can. Commissioner Barth. I, you know, I keep getting calls from people around the county that, uh, you know, about their road, about their flooding, and, you know, to some extent it's a cumulative thing where if your road is washed out uh, four times, because some of these f washouts were not even disasters, they were just another washout. Uh, is there anything can be done to sort of total up the, the you know, the full, uh, you know, if you repaired your roof four times in a year, uh, but there was only two disasters declared, uh, is there a way to submit that as an issue? It has to fall within the period of the disaster. Now in the spring, it was a long period because of all the, the weather that we had, they, they kept extending it. So all those, uh, all those um, damage were included in that. So if it washed out four times, as long as they kept track of it, and submitted their bills and have the paperwork that showed that they put so much gravel on, that could be covered. And now in this incidence, there's been some roads that haven't been fixed since the spring, so that damage would not qualify, but it will qualify in the spring incident when they get to, uh, when they submit their billing. Now if they fix the road and it washed out again, this will qualify to help them pay this. Now there's very few townships that are submitting um, uh, preliminary disaster reports um, and then I've got uh, Team Rubicon going up to Del Rapids and they're going to help some townships out this weekend so hopefully I'll have some harder numbers by uh, early next week and the deadline to get it to the state is the 7th of October so we're working hard to get that done. Commissioner Karski. So is this um, resolution strictly for public entities or does it include individuals that would have suffered damage also? There's a, a different program for the individual assessments, but it includes, it, it basically includes everything. So we're, we're adding it. There's two together. separate okay. things, but it, this is just a catch all, I think. Okay. So. Thank you. So private citizens, if they have damage to report, call 211? Correct. And we've had a considerable amount of people uh, calling in from the county to 211 and and uh, you know, Del Rapids is working on some buyouts of some homes up there um, as well. So there's some interest. Okay. okay. Well, I appreciate Reagan coming today. And if you want to come forward and give us a little bit of an update, that would be great. Uh, Regan Smith, emergency manager for the city of Sioux Falls. Uh, we are in the, uh, it, it's early in this, but I, I can tell you that uh, we have significant, city of Sioux Falls has significant cost uh, for this matter. We did have uh, three cleanup contractors uh, working for us, uh, probably at an estimated cost of $400,000. Um, uh, bridge, we had, we did have uh, damage to bridges on 60th Street North, and we in, in indicate that's going to be over 200000 uh, We'll be moving forward on si sidewalk, uh, stump removal, curb repair. That's going to be probably a couple hundred thousand. And then an un unknown amount for our response and debris, debris cleanup by city. Uh, labor and equipment. So I, I estimate the city of Sioux Falls is going to be well over a million dollars for, for our cost for this incident. Uh, we are working, uh, as we always do, with the Helpline Center. Um, my initial estimate is we've got about 250 structures uh, that were uh, damaged to some degree. Uh, whether they were just affected, uh, major, destroyed, and then another three, 300 plus homes that had tree damage. So uh, we will go through both the public uh, assistance and the individual assistance preliminary damage assessment uh, with Minia and Lincoln County and just appreciate all the consideration and support from, from this board. Commissioner Karski. Thanks for being here, Regan. Good seeing you again. Uh, question, the resolution just addresses heavy rain and flooding. I know a lot of the damage 
was tornadic in Sioux Falls. Should that be referenced in this, or isn't that part of the deal? We, we should probably reference uh, high winds and, and tornadoes. Okay. And, and you know, they'll, they'll look at that when, when they're out there. I don't know how uh, they'll look at all of that damage, and then uh, the governor's office will, will include that, that information in their declaration to, uh, to the president. Okay, so it would include the cleanup from sure that. Okay, yes. thank you. I'm curious how those costs compare to the cost you guys incurred in the spring. Uh, I think this will be less, uh, slightly less, okay. but but you know we're unfortunately getting good at this. Yeah. I'm sure. Uh, you know, I appreciate you being here as well. And just looking at the along the river, so many trees have been knocked down and are hanging in the water. Uh, those things will be moved by the next flood, which if, even if we're just in a wet cycle as opposed to climate change, there's gonna be another uh, gusher coming down the, the pike and those trees will then pile up against bridges and back up water even further. And I believe these bridges need to be raised and made wider uh, so they don't act as dams. I noticed, uh, I think it's Cherry Rock Park, there's a pedestrian bridge which is maybe just brand new, but it's probably three feet higher than the normal water level. And that thing has got trees piled against it from this last event. May have been cleaned up by now, but I, it's, it seems silly to build a bridge that low uh, on the river. Well, the city, when those are designed, they're approved by the Corps of Engineers per our floodplain management plan, so. Do they believe in climate change? I don't, I, I think we've got <laughs> troubles. We've got to consider that it's gonna be wet, it's going to be, and that could be just a wet cycle, but um, let's get those trees out of the water. Any right. other questions? All right, appreciate it. Can I just make ask you for one clarification, and, and Jason Gearman may want to weigh in on this as well. When we when we make a motion to approve this resolution, would you recommend that we modify the resolution to include high winds as I, well? I think we should. That that way, you know, I think they would look at that, but but then it's very clear. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. I'd make a mo motion to pass the resolution, but add in the second whereas high wind <coughs> damage. So I have a, a motion to amend. Is there a second? Second. A motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. So now I'd consider a motion to um, adopt the resolution um, as amended to declare uh, high winds and flooding disaster for September 2019 throughout Minnehaha County. So moved. Second. second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, whoops, sorry, roll call vote. Karski? Aye. Barth? Aye. Heiberger? Aye. Bender? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay, so that takes us to item 11, which is to issue a proclamation recognizing October 2019 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month in Minnehaha County. Amy Carter, good morning. Good morning. Amy Carter with Children's Inn and the Minnehaha County Family Violence Council. And also with me is Kelly Peterson from the Minnehaha County State's Attorney's Office and many of her colleagues, as well as um, the Sheriff's Department is represented too. So uh, we are happy to be here and as we are every October to recognize Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Um, so if you'd like, I can read the proclamation. That'd be wonderful, thank you. Um, and also I will mention Kelly does have purple ribbons, um, either for vehicles or for to wear. If you are interested in those at all, not only the commission, but anyone in attendance, we can get those to you, so. All right, uh, whereas for over four million women are victims of severe assault by their intimate partners annually in the United States, and nearly one in four women is likely to be abused by a partner in her lifetime. Whereas children who grow up in violent homes and are abused and neglected at a rate higher than national average. Whereas in 2019, the Sioux Falls Police Department and the Minnehaha County Sheriff's Office responded to over 1,900 incidences related to domestic violence, stalking, and protection order violations. Whereas, in 2017, 35% of the murders in South Dakota were a result of domestic violence. Whereas, a, a dedicated group of citizens have been fighting domestic violence together through the Minnehaha County Family Violence Council for 37 years. Whereas, wearing a purple ribbon during the month of October and attending Take Back the Night on October 10th will show support for victims and survivors of domestic violence. 
Whereas the voices of victims offer us important insight into the personal pain and loss the victims of domestic violence endure and are voices that deserve our attention, respect, and support. Now, therefore, we, the Minnehaha County Commission, do hereby proclaim the month of October 2019 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month and urge all citizens to become actively involved to work towards improving victim safety and holding perpetrators of domestic abuse accountable for their actions against individual victims and our society as a whole. So I'll just also mention, as mentioned in the proclamation, that Take Back the Night is next Thursday, October 10th, at the Multicultural Center. If anyone um, here or listening would, would like to attend, it's a free event, and it's, it's really designed to bring our community together to support victims and survivors. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you for coming today. I know you guys do a lot of very difficult but really important work, so thank you. Thank you. Please. I'd entertain a motion to um, issue that proclamation. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Madam Chair. Yes, Commissioner Barton. Uh, you know, just a minute ago, we had a resolution uh, on a flooding and wind disaster. Well, this issue of domestic violence has been a disaster since uh, before <laughs> records. And just because it's spread out doesn't mean it's any less devastating, and I think it's absolutely more devastating, and what are we going to, when are we going to really manage to stop it? I, I appreciate everyone working on this, but it's, uh, uh, it's a disaster, and, uh, you know, marching and all that kind of stuff is great, but uh, everyone uh, on either side of the problem needs to reassess <coughs> their position. We must stop this. Thank you. Okay, so that takes us to item 12. Um, consider a motion to approve uh, uh, following actions related Madam to the- Chair, did we vote on? Oh, maybe not. <laughs> we had a motion and a second. Maybe we forgot to vote, I apologize. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, motion passes unanimously. Thank you for that reminder. Okay, so that takes us to a motion uh, to consider to approve the following actions related to the disposition of tax deed properties. Auditor Lewis, good morning. Uh, good morning, uh, Commissioners. Bob Litz from the Auditor's Office. And uh, uh, I guess I, the first thing I'd like to do is, is uh, understand, uh, it would be a point of order. Uh, we had a couple of changes from what was, what was initially provided until what is going to be published. And uh, would you like me to read the old uh, agenda first and then uh, read the replacement one? Or shall I just read the replacement one for 12? Um, why don't you explain what happened and then you can. Um what, what happened was, was we had uh, uh, two more properties that were uh, paid off the day before yesterday or, or Friday, uh, real late in the game. So those will no longer be on the sale. And another one, uh, we looked at uh, whether it should be on the sale or whether it should be gifted. And if it's just going to be gifted as we're going to propose and as the appraisal board pros, uh, proposed, then. Uh, uh, it should probably just be surplus instead of on the sale. Okay, so why don't you read the old, the one that's on the agenda and explain how that changes. Okay, the one that's on the agenda, uh, number uh, item number 12, uh, we would be accepting the findings of the Minnehaha County Surplus Appraisal Board Report uh, with the following change. Uh, uh, first, uh, uh, we would uh, declare RDIDs 11412, 11419, 27054, 47471, 62130 and 64111 as surplus for sale at public auction. Uh, in that case, uh, the two properties, the 11412 and 11419, uh, had paid, so we'd like to remove those from the sale. Okay. Um, these, uh, these are uh, something that you have to do. Do you want to do a roll call vote on these as you go along? So, our first one is the first item that we need to take action on is to accept the findings of the Minnehaha County Surplus Property Appraisal Board report. So, I think we'll go ahead and do that. Motion to accept the report. Second. Motion and a second. Any questions, <coughs> comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay, so that takes us to the next item. Okay, item B would uh, be to. Uh, uh, I already read. I already read the RDIDs that would be down there, but uh, the replacement would be to do declare RDIDs two seven zero five four four seven four seven one. 62130-64111 as surplus for sale at public auction and approve the recommended bid amounts. And uh, what we've done was taken off the two that were paid up late. Okay. Questions? 
Yes, Commissioner Heiberger. The two that are removed, are those going to be donated or they were paid No, the two that the were removed, Cindy, were paid up. Okay, all right, thank you. Make a motion to approve. Second. So a motion and a second to declare RDIDs 27054, 47471, 62130, and 64111 as surplus for sale at public auction and approve the minimum bid amounts. Any further comments, questions? Yes, Commissioner one more, Heiberger. One more comment. Um, are, are the ones, any of the ones that we declared as surplus for public sale, are there people living in any of those? Uh, yes, there are. Uh, there, there are three of them that have people in them. Uh, it will be RDID 27054. Uh, there's 47471. We're not sure about that, but it is a house. It appears to be abandoned. And then the other RD, uh, one that uh, we're looking at would be 64111. And the situation with that is, is the lot and mobile home that are on it were transferred to a new owner. And the title for the land got transferred, but the title to the mobile home did not. Both are in arrears, uh, but we can't take the mobile home because there is no, the title is not, we can't take the title on it as it is. So what uh, we're proposing is, is that we auction the lot off and let the owner uh, come in and transfer the title and settle up if he can. Commissioner Heiberger. Also wondering um, what type of reach out we've done to all of them. I know where there's been plenty, but just to explain what we do, we don't like to kick people out of their houses. And in the past, we have worked really hard to, um, and sometimes we've been able to rectify these at the last minute. So I'm just wondering what process has been. Well, you know, uh, it's been a long and laborious process this year because there's been a lot of tax deed properties. A little bit of a backlog, we've worked through them. Uh, a lot of the properties that look hopeful, we have taken them off the sale. If we've gotten contact from people that are interested uh, in, in paying and have made partial payments or have a bank working with them or a realtor working with them, we thought we'd just keep them off and see how those play out. And there's, I, I can't even tell you how many of them there are. There's probably 20 of them out there. Uh, there's been other ones that, uh, uh, there's, there's one house in there that the person is living in uh, that it is literally falling down. Uh, they have canvas on the roof or tarps on the roof. Uh, there's holes in the garage that raccoons are living in. Um, those people are still living in there and uh, it's not a good situation. Uh, in, my, in my view, and I, I think the city would agree with me that they're the house is probably inhabitable. It probably shouldn't have a person in there. That one there, they've been unresponsive. Uh, to us uh, in all matters. I think they're writing it out. They've uh, been five years behind in their arrears. Uh, speaking with the neighbors, there's been problems with code enforcement on that property, and uh, that is why we decided to take that one to sale. I'm not even sure that if somebody buys it, they're going to be able to rehabilitate that house. Uh, there's a, the trailer house situation I've talked to you about. Uh, there's, there's one on there that uh, uh, is, is a thing that... Uh, it would be a 66784, and that is an owner-occupied house. It's over by the cemeteries off of 12th Street. It's a very nice place. Uh, there's been no response. I've reached out. I've been unable to get a phone number to them, but they have been properly served in that. Uh, as I look at the title report on there, there is a federal tax lien for about $20,000 on the property, and I don't know whether that person has just given up or what. They've not been responsive, and there's been plenty of outreach on that. Uh, and we've had other ones that we've, we've reached out on, like I say, that uh, we, have, we have just decided to take off the sale uh, because they've shown progress. So I've, now I'm confused. 66784 is the one that you referenced that had the um, federal lien on it? Yes. But I don't see that. That's something that we aren't taking action on today? Uh, no, we'd be taking action on that. I can prov I've got the, uh, the title company reports if you'd like to look at those. I didn't feel comfortable putting those out. So the motion that we have does not contain that 66784. It contains 27054, 47471, 62130, and 64111. Mm -hmm. That, are you looking at the original, the original what was published, Commissioner? Yes. Okay. And the motion and the second that was already made and seconded. 
for the four remaining RDIDs. Yeah. Yes, yes. <clears throat> and that one is that one is on there, I believe. The one that I just spoke of, is that your is that your question? That one is not on the motion. It's not listed in the was not posted. Do we need to amend the motion? I'm not sure we can do that when it wasn't posted. I don't think we need to. I think we have four that we have a motion on and we should move forward on it. Okay. If, if this other property that you referenced needs to have action on it, I think we'd have to take that action separately after it was posted. Okay. Well, we could bring that back. The sale date does not happen until the 26th, so yep. we, could, we could do that again. It must have been an oversight. Okay. So, so it, it go and, ahead. And also, in response to uh, Cindy's question about removing people from the houses, this year we have a record 11 tax payment plans. Uh, I've got those up for review, and they're all current today. And so th that's another outreach that we do. We don't like removing anybody from their properties. We certainly don't. But some of these situations just become to the point where um, that's that's the ultimate recourse. And I don't I don't like doing it. I hear a lot of a lot of really sad stories out there. Uh, I've got some other things that we will be bringing forward uh, in the future uh, that will show you that we've been trying to remedy and work with people that are uh, that are just at that end. So. Any further questions, comments? So are we are we looking to uh, declare RDIDs 668728 80746 and 83988? Is that the ones? That, no. Is that where we're at right now? Or did we? No, do we're that? on item B still, Bob. We're on item B. Okay. Yes. Yes. So it's the last four on item B. Yes. Madam Chair, I call the question. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. Um, roll call vote, please. Bard. Aye. Heiberger. Aye. Karski. Aye. Bender. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. So yeah. that takes us to the next item, which is 12C, and which uh, would be to de declare RDIDs 66872, 80746, and 83988 as surplus for transfer to the City of Sioux Falls and approve the resolution authorizing the County Treasurer to issue a quick claim deed and authorizing the Auditor to abate outstanding taxes, interest, and penalties levied against the property. Um, Any questions for the auditor? Commissioner Karski. When I was on the city council, these always kind of fascinated me because county's gifting land to the city, basically, and it, it's unbuildable land for the most part, so we, we get to give our problem to the, the city. Is that kind of what we're doing? Then the city turns it into a drainage pond or... Well, what happens to this land once the city gets it? Well, Commissioner Karski, all these parcels are drainage, uh, and one of them uh, has an easement on it already uh, for the drainage, so they're uh, riding the horse without paying for the feed, so to speak. Uh, this is very typical with the city. I mean that uh, we have these parcels for drainage that they would like to have, and they will assume ownership. They will mow them. It will be part of the drainage plans. All three of these pieces fall into that category. So uh, the city knows that these properties are coming to them then? Well, they're hoping that you'll, <laughs> they're hoping that you will. Okay, okay. Commissioner Heiberger. Do we know what the taxable, um, what, what are we authorizing to give up in taxes? Um, taxes I would have taxes? to, uh, I would have to look back and add those up. I did not prepare those, uh, the total amount of tax that we're going to be putting off today. And I would say that if someone is interested, it is in the book because I know when, it might, when I was flipping through it, it is in here somewhere so that's fine okay. thanks commissioner karski the developer took a plot of land developed everything they could and then just walked away from this part because they couldn't do anything with it except for its drainage so they're the ones that truly are getting the the taxes waived um, correct yes it used to be when you platted out a development you were responsible for the drainage on that and in if you had a retention pond, the way the law was written back then, I believe that uh, you had to maintain it, you had to dredge it out, you had to mow it and all those things. It didn't take the developers long to figure out if they just didn't pay the taxes on it, the city would come and, and assume ownership on it. And it's my understanding that that platting uh, process has changed up to disallow those today. So, and that's yeah, why platting fees have gone up. Oh, probably. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. Mr. Barth. Dean is exactly right, and uh, in our planning and zoning, when we have a subdivision uh, development plan, uh, we resist allowing uh, lots to be placed all around a, 
a, a donut hole which no one will ever own and, <coughs> and uh, then becomes our problem. I think that uh, one thing people don't remember is that you have to allow access to your property. So if the neighbors all own the <coughs> land all the way around this, this one acre parcel, they would have to allow the county access to it so we could drive our bulldozer in there and fix it. <coughs> We don't let that happen in the county planning. I, I'd, I'd also like to add that one of the parcels, 80746, we dealt with in, in 2013. And uh, there was two parcels that were right next to each other. They're on a steep lot off of Madison uh, when you would be going towards, uh, uh, you'd be going to the east towards Brandon. The city was interested in one of them, but the other one at the time was 80746 that we're not interested in because it had a federal tax lien against it. Uh, that has been since cleaned up and they've indicated an interest. Uh, it's an unbuildable lot. You'd have to haul in just thousands a yard of, of, uh, of uh, dirt in there to build anything on it. Uh, it. It's probably got a 45 degree grade right off of Madison Avenue. I did approach the neighbor back then uh, he was interested in working with it, but he had no interest in it whatsoever. Like I say, it's, it's got a steep uh, grade to it, and it's wooded lot, and it's uh, suitable only for drainage, and the city will take that now. Thank you. Any other questions for the auditor? Move to approve. Got a motion? Second? Yep. And a second. Uh, roll call vote, please. Heiberger? Aye. Karski? Aye. Barth? Aye. Bender? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. So that takes us to D, which is declare, to, to declare RDID 63567 as surplus for the purpose of transfer. Commissioner, or uh, Auditor Litz. <laughs> and this was, uh, this was one of the uh, changes to the original uh, because we weren't sure if that should be on the sale or if it should be uh, uh, donated. It's about a 10 foot wide by 90 foot long piece of property that is the same dimensions as the neighboring property. And the appraisal board has recommended that we deed that over to them. Uh, we're in discussions on that and uh, wanted to get the approval first for it. Questions? Roger DeWitz, Commissioner um, How much is owed on that one? Seems like I could plant two rows of corn there. That was uh, it, uh, today, or uh, uh, when we did the report, probably two months old, it was $469.99, falling under the $500 threshold. Other questions? Yeah, I'm, I'm quite certain that the neighbor that has, is attached to this property has been mowing it and taking care of all, uh, all these years, and I'm not even certain they don't think they own it already. <laughs> and to approve item D. Second. Motion and a second. Further comments? Roll call vote, please. Karski? Aye. Barth? Aye. Heiberger? Aye. Bender? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. So the last item here is just to um, clear up and correct for the record that we've removed RDID 114112 and RDID 11419 from the notice of sale and to authorize the auditor to publish notice of public auction on October 26th at 10 a.m. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Any comments, questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Madam Chair? Yes. Um, Bob, um, where, do, where do you hold the auction and uh, at what time? Right down where you walk in the west door. By the pillar. In, right in there. And uh, it will be 10 o'clock on Saturday, October 26th. And do we do have a list of people that we send out notices to that would be interested in such properties. Do they need to bring cash or... In your case, uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> I, I would remind you that uh, commissioners cannot buy properties from this sale. I'm well aware. Okay. Mr. Kobe is too, I believe. Um, there is also one other thing that we noticed. It was provided. It was a typo that was provided to us in the description for 27054 for the notice of sale. And it's, they got Brakey's edition and it was Braley's edition. And we're going to correct that typo. I was advised by uh, legal of the state's attorney's office just to point that out. It will be corrected before it's published. Okay, thank you. So I believe you have the next item as well, item 13, which is a brief on current Minnehaha County resolutions for tax deed payment plans. Uh, uh, Gerald asked uh, uh, th for this last, uh, last week, and uh, I have provided for you the resolutions that you approved and the spreadsheets that we keep in the auditor's office on the payments that people are making on these here. 
Uh, and then uh, we, we, take, we take the cash or the checks over to the treasurer's office and it gets accrued until they are able to pay off that property. And then we apply it towards them. Uh, all of these tax deed payment plans are current. They are paid currently. So. Commissioner like, Karski. Any do questions? We, do we cash the check? Do we cash the check? Um, that it would be a treasurer's office question. <laughs> Good morning. Hi there. Uh, Hayden Graff, uh, treasurer's office, obviously. Um, to be perfectly honest, it's a little out of my area. That's kind of the deputy treasurer's area. But I believe what happens <clears throat> is they do cash the, we do cash the check. And it goes into the advanced tax fund, and then when there's enough money to pay off, Maybe one of the years that's what the deputy treasurer will do. So yes, the cash do, or the checks do get cashed. Thank you. Yeah. That's all I had to say. Uh, Kelly and I have deputy treasurer. They do they do get cashed, and it goes into an advanced tax fund, and we do keep an eye on it. So when they do have enough of their payments in to clear up a year, we do go ahead and pay that year off, yeah, so whatever do, they have enough for. Do you run a spreadsheet like the auditor's yeah. office does? Also, then mm -hmm. okay. Any other questions? Good questions. I, I would also like to let the, this board know that uh, we have uh, yesterday, uh, uh, we cleared up a bunch of the 2015s. And so we continue to work on these. Uh, uh, they come in all the time. Uh, there's no apparent pattern to them. I can't explain to you why there was so many more this year uh, that, that really didn't qualify for the back load, but they were out there. And we worked through a lot of these this year. So, and I'd, I'd like to I'd like to compliment Hayden Graff from the treasurer's office for his performance. He came into it with no experience, but uh, he's been a pleasure to work with. Commissioner Heiberger, just a comment that when this report was written by um, the auditor's office, that over half of the amount due was paid. So at that, and you, as you said, a bunch more were paid after this report was written off. So um, we're well on our way to working on this list of <coughs> tax deeds. So thanks, Tom. I would ask one more question. Commissioner Barth. Bob, do you think people just ignore their mail? Do they, you know, you send them a mailing and they put it aside just as if it was from Davenport Evans or something and you, ignore You know, uh, Mr. Barth, uh, it, it's been my experience that uh, uh, there's been the occasional one that gets mailed to the wrong address, the folks' old address, and gets pigeonholed or something. Uh, a lot of people see these notices, but due to medical things or other things that are going on in their life, they just can't do it. And, uh, you know, when we get to that tax uh, deed uh, sale phase or, you know, when we're going to talk about the certificates or taking the certificate for it, the tax deed uh, title for it, then they, they, they come forward, a lot of them, and they, they get creative. Some people sell the property to cover it. Uh, other people come up with monies from different places. So uh, just, uh, it just comes to that time in their lives, and it's a deal, another thing that they have to deal with. Uh, we have a lot of tough stories out there, especially medical stories, but people do uh, recover from them and pay their taxes if they're capable of it. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Thank you for this report. I know Commissioner Benig is not here today, but he had an opportunity to look at it, so I appreciate you providing that. Very good. Thank you. So that takes us to item 14, consider resolution to set weight load limits on certain bridges within Minnehaha County. Shannon, good morning. Madam Chair, Commissioners, good morning. Shannon Schultz, Assistant County Highway Superintendent. This commission agenda item is basically an annual thing that we do. We annually inspect half of our bridges, so every two years all bridges get inspected, and our structural engineer found one new structure to post. So the, <clears throat> the list uh, on the table in the attachments uh, as a matter of convenience, uh, I'm skipping around, sorry, but um, this is on page three. Uh, we just list all the bridges that are posted mm -hmm. just because it's easy to come back to this agenda item and see all of them at once instead of you know, over time see which ones came on and which ones came off. In addition to that, uh, three structures have been completed for re replacement, and so those are coming off, and those structures are 5205-060, 5231-130, and 5032-060. Uh, there's some descriptions there in the agenda item where those are located. And so with the uh, passing of the task resolution, 23 structures will be posted for reductions in legal weight limits. This is to less than previous resolution. Um, please do not hesitate to contact, excuse me, DJ if you have any questions, but I'm here today to answer those questions. So the structure that came new is uh, structure 5206-100. 
Uh, it will be posted for three quarters of normal legal loads, which is 18 tons for single units and 30 tons for combination units. It's located on a county highway paved system on County Highway 122, which is also known as 254th Street, four miles south and six miles east of Baltic. Uh, we already have that uh, under design to be replaced next year. We do not like to have posted structures on our paved system. So anyway, that's, that's gonna be posted uh, as soon as this resolution is passed, and that is our request. Commissioner Heiberger. Just a comment that in uh, Shannon's list here, there are 23 um, load limits. Only three of them are actually on county highways. The rest of them are township roads. So good job. That's working correct. On it. And we're, 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 it. we're gaining ground, but as, as you see, they also dilapidate over time. And so we have to add an occasional structure. So make a motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Roll call vote. Oh, Another Commissioner comment. Bard. You know, this is one of the worst times of year to put these weight limits on there because as the harvest approaches, people are going to cheat and overload their trucks and haul it to the elevator. Uh, and every year, not just in South Dakota, but in many states, there's a dramatic collapse of a bridge or two. Um, don't overload your truck. Follow these weight limits is what I'm trying to say. Appreciate that. And we will put some variable message board signs out uh, in advance of these structures to get people additional notice other than just the, the signage that goes along with the posting. So that will be um, as best we can posted and, and advertised as the travelers are using that route. Yeah, just like barricades during flooding times, these are posted for people's safety, not because we're trying to somehow be punitive. So yeah, we'd appreciate people taking care of themselves. Thank you for that. All right, any further comments, questions? So we have a motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Barth? Aye. Heiberger? Aye. Karski? Aye. Bender? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Those signs are for other people, Jean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're definitely for you. All right, so that takes us to item 15, which is consider a motion to approve and authorize the chair to sign a purchase agreement for four land parcels to require right away to rebuild Highway one, um, County Highway 146. Shannon. Thank you again. Um, this is an ongoing process. You guys have seen several of these. So this is evidence that we're becoming successful negotiating with, in this case, four land landowners, or four parcels with one family of landowners. Again, this is on County Highway 146, which is scheduled to be reconstructed next year. Uh, we are still in negotiation on some parcels, and some may actually end up going through condemnation, but these are not. In particular, uh, there's four parcels owned by Richard D. Lacey and Connie R. Lacey. This is 58 point, excuse me, 0 0.58 acres in the amount of $5,689.80. A second parcel, <coughs> pardon, um, across the street actually from them and the same landowner, Richard D. Lacey and Connie R. Lacey, uh, 0 0.58 acres in the amount of $5,689.80. And I will point out these are H lots which is an extension of public highway right-of-way. Uh, the existing corridor right-of-way was too narrow to get to uh, 50 feet per side, and through these legal instruments, uh, we, we acquired that, that legal right-of-way to 400 feet of total right-of-way. Moving on, uh, parcel number three is Richard D. Lacey and Connie R. Lacey, uh, 0 0.26 acres in the amount of $2,550.60. And lastly, uh, Miles H. Lacey in the amount of 0 0.66 acres, for a payment of $6,474.60. So with these attached, uh, our staff will file, or with your approval, our staff will um, file these H slots with uh, the register of deeds. Questions for Shannon? Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, commissioners. So that takes us to item 16, which is to consider a motion to approve a consume and blend alcohol beverage license for an event on October 12th at the Isaac Walton League. Olivia. Thank you. We have received another consume and blend um, alcohol beverage license application from Tanner Jacobson for his wedding taking place on October 12th, 2019. I will note on the application it was listed as 1991. I uh, called Tanner and he and I both had a good laugh about that, but it is 2019. <laughs> So um, I'm available for questions if you have any. Any questions for Olivia? Madam Chair, I, I will again re remark that uh, I last week asked if the applicant was over 21, and 
uh, you and Maggie and uh, Olivia have added that to the process of uh, when people are asking. And in fact, this applicant is 30. Okay. Or maybe he didn't want me to tell that. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, I appreciate that being in the process. Thank you. Thank you for bringing it up. Okay, so I'd entertain a motion to approve the Consume and Blend Alcohol Beverage License. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any further comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. That takes us to item 17, which is to consider a motion to authorize GovTech as the online vendor for property tax payments and Heartland as the credit card processing vendor and authorize Monty Wannabach to sign contracts on behalf of Minnehaha County. Monty, good morning. Good morning, Commissioners. Monty Wadenbach with the uh, Minnehaha County IT Department. Um, <clears throat> what we are looking at doing is uh, refreshing our uh, the county's online property tax payment uh, website just really to update and streamline um, that process. So a while back you may recall that we had GovTech come, up, come in and do kind of a, a brief um, overview of their solution, how it works, and then the, uh, the benefits that provides to um, the county and to our citizens. Um, so I put some details in there as far as the, the rates and the uh, cost per uh, transaction for the ACH uh, uh, transactions. Um, I'm available for any questions you may have. Commissioner Heiberger. And just a comment. Um, I want to thank you, Monty, and the staff that has worked on finding this solution that will help um, citizens in Minnehaha County to pay their taxes more quickly. Um, this was something done by other than the treasurer's office to figure out how to decrease the workload down there. And so I want to thank those people who were involved in making this work forward. So mm -hmm. with that, I'd make a motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Further comments, questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. So that takes us to item 18, which is to consider a resolution cross-appointing the current regular and alternate lay mental illness board members to the temporary joint cooperative mental illness boards between Minnehaha, Lincoln, and Yankton counties. Carol Muller. Good morning, commissioners. Last week you had before you to sign a joint agreement with Yankton on a very temporary basis for the mental health boards as uh, of your behavioral health care had a lot of destruction due to the um, tornado that went through on September 11th. Today we're just adding into this a resolution that would appoint the um, lay members from both counties so it completes the loop so we've got everything in place um, as a temporary situation. Questions for Carol? I know that this was brought up last week mm -hmm. um, when we um, took action last week and we just needed to post it so we could make sure we Followed all the rules. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Heiberger. Aye. Karski. Aye. Barth. Aye. Bender. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. So it takes us to item 19, which is to consider a motion to authorize change orders 6 and 8 for the jail expansion project. Carol. Good morning, commissioners. Before you today are two change orders for the jail, and uh, the exciting thing about this is that uh, change order number six is actually a deduct of $607,788. A few weeks ago, I think it was back in August, we talked about uh, that we were going to expand the scope of our master control and how we could make that much more efficient. We kind of hoped we could do that, but we needed to see how the money flows on that. Um, this deduct or return of the money to the county is, uh, making up a large part of a large part of that so we're very excited about that happening that was because the contractor had set aside part of their contingency dollars for tariff protection because at the time of this we were very concerned about tariff protections um, that has not uh, hit us the way we thought it could have and uh, everything is is at least 80 percent bought out so 80 percent of the tariff protection is being used for these dollars. That is change order number six. Change order number eight is for the uh, judicial courtroom within the jail. A few weeks ago you had before you to approve, I think it was $29,000 for the architects to do the drawings on this one. Again, it was on the scope as an alternative that we would like to be able to do, but we had to see how money was going. And uh, we're excited that we're able to go through and make that, make that work. The judi judicial courts build, a, build out is $292,425. And then along with that is the entry vestibule upgrades 
for $28,659. And that's a hardening of the materials that will be used in the vestibule area for the, court, for the uh, jail. Questions? I just would note that, I mean, obviously it's great news that the contractor is able to give us back um, over $600,000. And I'd also really like to thank the, um, the courts, and um, they've been great about working with us on this um, new judicial courtroom that would be inside the jail, which will provide great efficiencies for jail staff in transporting pr prisoners back and forth to um, required hearings, lots on Monday, that like, involves a lot of personnel, and I, th I think it will be a great step forward in, in promoting efficiency in that process. And safety for everyone, actually. So, any other questions or comments? If no. yep, motion Step second, vote, yeah. second roll call vote, please. Karski, aye. Barth, aye. Heiberger, aye. Bender, aye. Motion passes unanimously. Commissioner, from the auditor's office, I was went back and I was looking at things because I did have a little confusion, and I uh, would like to propose an amendment to uh, 12B. Uh, it would uh, that would be to declare RDIDs um, 27054, 47471, 62130, 64111, and also include 65784, which was the one that we uh, did not originally have on the updates on this sheet that we had. Uh, it is on the notice of county sale of property. And if we can amend that 12B, it would prevent me from having to come back here next week with a separate resolution and everything. I personally would prefer you come back with a separate okay. resolution. I think it was confusing for all of us. Commissioner Karski. When you come back with that next week, i also okay with bringing it back then, but you had mentioned a federal tax lien on that. Could you let us know how, if you have to do any homework on that, how that affects the ability for us to sell that property? Uh, are you referring to the uh, property out on Madison or the one, the house that? The uh, house, you had the, said there's the a house. federal tax lien. Well, they're, they're, they're difficult to get, uh, to get lifted off of there, and so it, it does cloud the sale. It, it inhibits people from wanting to bid on that because state liens and, uh, and federal liens are a little bit more difficult to remove from a property in a tax deed sale. So um, the, the original one that I had out on Madison Avenue, uh, the, I, after the city wouldn't take it because the tax lien was on there, uh, we did contact the, uh, 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 it would be the, uh, whoever the federal, federal attorney is for the state of South Dakota at that time, it was Brandon Johnson. Uh, we contacted his office, got a bunch of lawyers into a flurry, and, uh, and then I just called Brandon out and explained it to him and could he get rid of it, and so that federal tax lien disappeared off, of the, off the Madison property. I guess it just depends on who's in that office out there. And there so is a there's still a lien on this property, they're not just going to forgive it. They're going to want to get paid. Uh, you know, uh, we are working on removing that. I think I would have to refer to the state's attorneys on this here. Do you recall what we're talking about here, Maggie? We can follow up. Okay. Uh, no, next week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, clean up, clean up the details on that, please. Okay. So then we will remove. Uh, uh, 65784 from the publication of the notice of sale to county property this time, and we'll publish a separate one then. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So that takes us to item 20, liaison reports. Are there any liaison? Commissioner Heiberger. I have two, and one of them I, I'll have a question for Bob when I get to it. Um, I did get a letter this last week that I don't know if anyone else got from um, Sherman Township that commented that they had not received um, one of their checks from the treasurer's office and was just wondering, you know, and wondering why it had, they, they said the treasurer's office said it had gotten lost in the mail and they said they were quick to respond when he realized that um, they had not received the check but just wondered why they hadn't realized, that why the treasurer's office had never realized that the check had never cashed because it was from July 2018. And so just corresponded back and forth with him. And he did say when he brought it to their attention, they were quick to get the issue resolved so that he could get paid, that um, Sherman Township was paid their back taxes. Um, I'm wondering for Bob, he also mentioned, have we ever considered doing direct deposit, deposit for um, property tax distributions to townships? So Bob that they don't have to Bob worry about getting the check. 
Bob Litz from the auditor's office, and I, I do not know of that happening. Uh, but I suppose it could be something that we could consider. Uh, I don't know if it's, it's legal or not, but uh, it would certainly be appropriate to look into it, I think. Yeah, it might, it might help those townships, especially when they have part-time people trying to keep track of everything, too, that since we're giving money to a government entity and it is their property tax distribution, so just something to look into, that would be great. Certainly. Thanks, Bob. Madam Chair, one more. Mm -hmm. And that was just to notify you that um, part of the Safety and Justice Challenge um, MacArthur grant that we received last year is um, mandatory or, or assigned um, workshops to attend. And so I, um, I'm in one of those people that's been assigned to some of their workshops. And so I will be leaving tomorrow through Friday um, for Houston to go attend a Safety and Justice Challenge through McCarthy, MacArthur Grant that we received, um, paid for by the MacArthur Grant. And we will be look, looking uh, at, again, at racial and ethnic fairness and court processing issues. Um, I did attend one of these last year, and it's a part of that whole group of things that we're doing. So I'm just letting you know I'll be going. Will you be able to stay in Houston through the baseball playoffs? No, I'm going to be working. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, Commissioner Karski. Uh, last, <coughs> excuse me, Tuesday after the commission meeting, we had a meeting of the uh, facilities task force. Uh, I thought it was a fantastic meeting, covered a lot of ground. Last meeting, we um, selected, the th group selected a representative, one of our citizen representatives. So they're going to, Craig Dewey is putting together the PowerPoint and presentation of the recommendations and um, the question comes, how do we present it to the commission? And the discussion between a few of us, Commissioner Bender, myself, Carol Muller, is, and I would support this idea and look for your support on it too, um, to have, like we do with our budget hearings, a facilities hearing that would allow us to take the report um, as it's given and to have an in-depth discussion because the report does encompass many areas and um, millions of dollars in assets existing, sales of property and construction and so forth. It's, it's more than what we can do at a build, building committee and it's more than we should take on at a commission meeting. So I look for your support and attendance at a meeting where we can, in, in, by soon, I mean probably within the next few weeks when we can get it scheduled to make this happen. Um, if you have questions, I can take them, but um, a very deep dive. Um, thanks to Auditor Litz and his staff, Kim and Vicki and Craig and Carol and to so many of our citizens that uh, Commissioner Bender, I'm sorry, Benninga included and so many of the citizens that um, gave their time and knowledge into making this happen. We'll have a very good product for your review. And I appreciate your leadership on that, and we are really looking forward to that. This is a, it's a big, um, very important uh, opportunity and um, challenge for the county right now to address some um, far-flung and some aging facilities and uh, take ad advantage of some uh, opportunities that we have with financing coming forward. So we're looking forward to hearing that. The idea is that we would try to schedule, uh, you know, at least a two to three hour um, block of time where we can really take a deep dive into look at all the information that that group um, looked at and so and we do want to really thank those citizens that spent uh, dedicated a lot of time toward most of our facilities and um, have helped us really focus on where our where we should be you know kind of looking going forward so thank you any other liaison reports at this time okay um, any new business Yes. Bob Litz from the Auditor's Office. And I wanted to uh, report to this body that uh, uh, since uh, 2017, I've been in discussions with the Secretary of State's office about uh, the ability of the, st uh, the state and the different, different jurisdictions to conduct what is called risk limiting audits. And it is a way of auditing the ballots post election to assure uh, the public that the machines have properly tabulated the ballots. And uh, I would also tell you that. Uh, uh, soon I'll be going out to Peer uh, because we are going to be certifying the new software, and that will be uh, it will be Windows 10 up from Windows 7. 
Uh, you, I'm sure some of you have heard about our machines running on those. Uh, well, that, that is going to be happening, so I'll be part of that as well. Great. Thank you for your leadership in that area. All right. Old business. <coughs> I'd invite Carol Muller forward just to give us an update on the legislative audit um, status of that report. Good morning, Commissioners. Carol Muller, Commission Office. Uh, last week, Jeff Schaefer from the Department of Legislative Audit was here and presented you the findings that um, existed with Minnehaha County and just wanted to let you know that all of that needed to be wrapped up by the last day of September, and it was. Uh, the response letter was filed by the county, and actually you can uh, anybody can find it all online, as you can find previous audits also. But everything is at the Minnehaha County website and it's underneath the commissioner's finance you'll find uh, I think at least five years worth of audits on there including 2018. Well thank you thank you for your work on that and I know that consumed a lot of your time last week so we appreciate it. Any other old business? If not I'd entertain a motion to recess the Minnehaha County Commission meeting. So moved. Second. Motion and a second all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Uh, let's try to recess for 10 minutes and reconvene about 10 minutes after 10. <laughs>